All right, so in today's video, we're gonna be covering my new Ultra Gauge. So here's what you're gonna receive. I mean, it'll be all packaged up nicely, and it'll have like a plastic wrap over the actual head unit piece. And I tried to restore this or reset it um, for this video, so we'll see if I can walk you through the setup phase, because it's, all it's gonna ask you is the engine size and uh, the fuel tank size. That's really it. So here is the vertical mount they have uh, listed on the site. And I wanted to have this you can see, can't, I'm not really sure if you can see, but I wanted to have this here. We'll see if I cut it to shape or whatever, but essentially I want my gauge to sit right there, just out of view of the cluster and not blocking the boost gauge. All right, so for setup, I'm gonna turn the key on, grab my little plug. It's gonna scan and then it's gonna find you know, um, whatever ECU or whatever connection it needs to find. So just give it a second. All right, so there it is. It found the ECU. Now it's going to go to discovering the gauges. And it's going to generate what it can read from this car, which I think is about 45 from the last time I did this. All right, still waiting on this uh, process. Takes about, mm, well, there we go. So 45 gauges found. All right, now on the back of the unit, you have your up and down key. I hope I can get this camera to see all this, but up and down, and then menu, which is like your select or okay. Now, here we're gonna go with, uh, well, I'll show you this interface, so, pay attention to how clicky this is, right? And how responsive it is. As soon as I press this in, I'll come back to this later, but we're gonna go with gallons. All right, now it's gonna, basically let me choose the gallons or whatever i guess this is for the fuel economy or the trip crap for the car but i really don't care about all that in this feature again i only bought this to uh monitor my water temps or whatever so quick google search showed me it said 12.7 again don't i don't really care if it's accurate but i'll set it that way just to do whatever and if you hold this down it will skip in 10 digits and then eventually move over to the uh, whatever. So there we go, select engine size. So good old Miata things. We're going to just call it a great 1.8 on the dot. See, I held it down too long right there, so it definitely jumped up quite a bit. I'm gonna let go and hold down again. Almost there, okay. 1.8 liters, select. Little warning, don't touch this while you're driving, of course, that's pretty common knowledge. And here we are at the default home screen. I had to pause there just to make sure, or kind of make sure that I was getting what I wanted to see from this point of view on this head mount. So it will, chill, it will tell you uh, your check engine light codes or whatever. I know I have more than one. I don't know what they all are anymore. They're like EGR deletes and that kind of crap. Maybe like a bad O2 in the rear. I don't remember, but whatever. It'll keep flashing that code until you hit. Okay, so right here, down to suspend alarm. So I'm going to hold down the down arrow. Let go. All right, cool. Now, for the remainder of the time that I'm using this right now, it should not alarm with that check engine light again. All right. So anyways, this is the interface. You have four uh, gauges. Okay, I'm still getting this alarm. Let's try to hold it down longer, see what happens. Okay, so I held down too long, and then when I got done with the interface, it went to page two. So yes, you hit down to go through the pages. And not every time you click that button, it's gonna move. It's kinda touchy. Like you hear me clicking. That's page five. Still clicking. <laughs> all right. And then page seven, you can have free for all range there. I only want to use page one um, for obvious reasons. I just want to be able to plug and play and go, right? So we're going to adjust this now to uh, only have up here what we want to see. So I'll cover that now. Here's some basic setup instructions. We're going to go into the menu. Come on. There we go. All right, all your options are here. 
mainly focus on alarms and the gauges so I'm gonna come into here now All right you can zero out averages whatever it's recording you know trip stuff again they gear these things towards uh, fuel economy but that's not why I bought this so I really don't care about all that then we're gonna go into select the gauges again Here's your seven pages. I only care about page one. If you want to set up every page, go ahead, but here we go. Page one, selecting again. Now, these are the zones, right? Or on the left side, you see where it says zones. That's referring to the section of the screen that gauge is going to display. And I've been experimenting. I only want to have this whole screen just display coolant or water temps, but um, haven't been able to figure that part out yet, if it, if it can even do that. I checked on the site and it said you can go from four to six and even up to eight displays, which there might be some cool things in here I want to have on there, so I don't know. But at a minimum, I think it's four. So anyways, I'll come down here. Here we go, right? All I care about is coolant temp. So I'm going to select this and you hit up and down to change the zone you want to place it in, right? So you can go up, like I said, you can go up to eight, it looks like. Yep. And I'll reset to zero. Um, so zone one. All right, so there we go. I know now that's going to be the top left of the screen on page one. Um, and I wonder if it defaults any of these. We'll go ahead and put intake air up there just for the heck of it. I mean, why not? Make that zone two. Um, yeah, the rest of these I'm not too worried about right now. It is cool though that it tells you it can maybe give you some horsepower or torque numbers. I doubt it, but who knows? Uh, mass airflow can be a benefit for stock ECU, you know, whatever, guys. If you're not on a standalone and didn't go like map sensor or whatever. Um, don't care about this gallons per hour, so I'm going to go ahead and remove that, make that a zero. Okay, and same for these. I don't care about fuel level, so getting rid of all these now. All right, and that should be it for those, but I'll show you the other pages just so you can see them. A lot of trip meters, whatever. More trip stuff, more fuel economy stuff, whatever. All right, so now we're going back. And when I get back to the very first page again, now we can go over to alarms. All right, so the alarms menu, um, we're gonna go into, well, so the alarm siren obviously is a little beep you're gonna get when the alarm goes off. I'm assuming all alarms on or off means that maybe it has a default for every single gauge. So I'm probably gonna leave that off for now because I, I don't need it to be going through all the default that has set for those. Oh, you can do a frequency. I'll leave that alone. Never mind. I'm not gonna adjust that. I thought that might have been like how, or I thought that might have meant how frequently the alarm will go off after the fact. But we'll show you that in a second. So we're gonna go into setting the gauge alarms. All right. So coming down here to coolant temp again. The main reason I bought this gauge. I'm gonna come over here. I'm using the up and down. You know, to cycle through the page, but. I'll come over to the max, right? So for testing purposes in this video, um, I've already had the car running a little bit, but we'll go down to like, oh, I gotta hit select first. We'll go down to like 150 or 140 or something. Again, the longer you hold that button down, the more it'll jump. So you see it's just going through the tens. So we'll say 140 is where I'm scared of the temps being, so I'm gonna select that temp. All right, so I selected it. I'm gonna go back. All right, there we go. So it's showing that I guess the intake temps around 77 degrees. That's probably accurate. I did have it running a little bit, so it's a little warmer than the engine bay than it is outside. The ambient temp right now outside is probably around like 60-ish, maybe. Um, and as you can see right now, we're sitting at about 111 because again the car is running so. It's cooling down right now. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna go and fire it up. And forgive me if you hear any weird noises. There's a minor exhaust leak. Sometimes you hear it, sometimes you don't, but it is what it is. All right, 
and you saw the gauge stayed on the entire time, didn't get power cut to it, whatever, which, I mean, that's not a big deal, but at least you know it doesn't reset or like pause or anything like that. And now we're real time monitoring, well, the temperatures and whatnot. So, let the car warm for a little bit. I know I set it for 140, so I'm gonna cut the video here. I'll start filming around like 135 ish, and then we can watch this crap go down together. All right, so we're almost at the temps right now, or well, at least for the alarm. Um, I just have it resting here so you can kind of get an idea of, you know, glare or how bright this is. Pretty cool, pretty sick, whatever. I am planning to mount it right over here, like I said earlier, so it's kind of like in between. Um, of course, it won't match the interior, but I really don't care at this point. This is like a, almost a track car, you know, but not really. Um, all right, so we're about to get temps right here. So here we go. Kind of get an idea of how loud it's going to be. Yep, and it's going to tell you, hey, we've reached the value, whatever it beeps at you. It'll continue to keep alarming as the temps are climbing. And that is exactly why I bought this, right? So yeah, I think for uh, $100, that's about what I paid after shipping and buying the uh, vertical mount. This is uh, well worth the money. Um, I will go over some practical uses with it now, right? So let's just pretend I uh, just got down at the track or whatever. But I parked the car, I'm ready to cut it off. Let's see what happens, right? So I'm gonna cut the power to the car. Yeah, whatever, got the alarm still going off. All right, so cut power. It should cut off pretty soon. There it goes, and that's it, right? You leave it connected in that port even though you really can't see it. I know it's kind of dark in here. Um, the wire is long enough to where you can definitely move this. You could probably mount this in the glove box if you wanted to. Um, but for right now, like I said, it's gonna be over here, and I'm probably gonna run the wiring just around the back of the steering column and have it just barely visible here. All right, so then, now that I've already done the setup or whatever, I'm gonna take the key out completely. So now it's the next day or next time getting out on the track. Key in, cool, going to on position. It shouldn't come on, I've noticed this. I thought it would, but it won't right away. But you can turn the car back on. It's pretty much immediate and back to doing its thing and because it's still over the warning temp that I set, it should alarm pretty soon to let me know, hey, you're still too hot or whatever, even though we all know for testing purposes. Oh yeah, and of course, the check engine lights are gonna happen again. So this will be the only time you're gonna have to make sure you have your hand ready. I'm not gonna suspend this alarm, but I am gonna suspend the, uh, the check engine light code. All right, so I did come in here and confirm that you can change the frequency. So right now I'm kind of higher up in the hertz. So if I put it at like 40, I don't know, let's say I'm put it at 4781. So as soon as you submit or select, it does give you like a test beep. See that? And I think every time I hit the select button now, it also mimics the same sound. I've hit back here, let's see. Yeah, okay. So essentially you're, you're changing the sound of the alarm and now every beep you're gonna hear. So, a little bit higher pitched. I'm gonna go back to the default around like 45. Um, it moves a little slower here. Oh, there it goes, okay. Right as I say that, it started jumping around. So I'll hold down a little bit, let go, hold down a little bit and then let go one more time. And we'll call it good there. So overall, what do y'all think of this? Um, I'm not the first one to install one in a Miata by any means. There's plenty of write-ups and people's reviews and whatever. And uh, again, I'm not like a, I'm not bashing scan gauge or anything like that. This is the ultra gauge. I simply compared them based on the price point and what their features were. And for around a hundred dollars and that really cool, you know, programmable alarm or whatever. I think that's kind of sick, right? And the display is very easy on the eyes. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm holding the camera back about where I'd be sitting. And the numbers are very visible. 
Um, I am kind of disappointed that I can't, you know, like I said, make this entire screen just be the coolant tent. But now I get to monitor that and I can go through and see if there's any other gauges I want to have set up over here on the bottom. And uh, yeah, I think for the price, it's, uh, it's pretty sick. But uh, thanks for watching today's video. Um, do expect to see more, uh, I would say, installs coming pretty soon. I have like a, a decent stockpile of parts now to install, even like stainless brake lines. You name it, I've been buying it. I'm just kind of taking my time with it right now. I do hope the review kind of helps somebody out that maybe was curious about buying the same thing. Um, again, not a comparison video, not like a bash against any other gauges out there. There's plenty of options. I just thought that for $100 and uh, very, very easy install, like we're talking plug it into your OD port and play, that's pretty sick. But of course, um, from what I read in some of the write-ups, you can use this with a, uh, a standalone ECU, but you have to like pin something differently or jump something. I don't know. You might be able to still use this with an aftermarket ECU, but don't quote me on that. Do your research. But at least for stock cars or cars running their stock ECU still, that are able to just go right to the OBD port. That's um that's pretty cool. So uh, drop in the comments, y'all's opinion of it, whatever. I will put the link to the Ultra Gauge in the description, but it's very easy to Google that as well. And I'll do a quick little video of the website, how to order it, whatever. Um, Cause there are a couple little options here and there. So I'll see you guys later. All right, so if you're looking for more information on Ultra Gauge, here's their website, very easy to find, whatever. Um, on the home page, it's going to go over what all it can do, what all it can cover, all that good stuff. And then of course for two options. Now I went with wired because I wanted a independent unit, right? Like this is always going to be standalone. Don't need to worry about the battery life or whatever. They do offer a wireless option and it even lets it can go off of uh, Android and iPhone type stuff. So it's kind of sick, but I've, it, it kind of brings me back to like thinking about my GoPro and having to have my phone out and and doing whatever for like wireless connection. Had to worry about my battery life on my phone. Just wasn't about it. So I mean, this is still an option, but I can't give you really any solid reviews or advice there. But with the wired one, we'll go ahead and check that out real quick. And it brings up more options, more details on what all it can do. You know, where you might want to mount it, whatever. It's your car. And then if you go to buy now. Right, so there's the awesome price right now. It might change. I really don't know. But 80 bucks for this, that's pretty sick for the technology, right? You want to buy now, and then it's going to bring up these two options here. I went with the top one, the EM Plus version 1.4, only because it, you probably can't see it. might not focus, but it even says, when in doubt, go with this one. The other option is only $10 more dollars but I can't tell you what all it does. It might have a few more features, but based on the pictures, they look identical, so whatever. So down at the bottom of the screen, after you hit buy it now, um, you'll have the options for the mount. And uh, there's a few, right? Velcro and then whatever, surface, horizontal, vertical, don't matter. If you want to learn more about those, they have the nice little feature here. It's going to bring up the factory mount that comes on the device right away goes over some ideas for velcro straps and tying it through and then they advertise their vertical surface here they'll show you an example of it mounted and then down here will be the horizontal which is essentially the same thing um, or even this one but I don't think a lot of y'all are going to want to run a uh, windshield mount but that is an option I don't I don't think it looks that great but that's just me um, so yeah Thanks for watching the video guys. Um, this is kind of like a second outro. I know I said it later um, before I did this video on the website. But um, anyways, hope it helps someone out. And uh, sorry it's not too in depth with all the features of it because it looks like there's a whole lot to learn but I really don't care to. It was very, very easy to plug it in and navigate the features to get what I wanted on the screen and have at least monitoring my uh, coolant temp. So that's pretty cool. Um, the alarm feature, huge plus, can't, can't praise that enough, right? So, um, I'll catch you guys later.